Hi, and welcome to session seven of our Cool Selected Deep Dive. My name is Morten, and today we're going to talk about choking. Now, in our previous sessions, we talked about incompressible and compressible flow in valves, and we developed an equation which was actually valid for both types of flow. The equation was the mass flow equals the kV value, the flow coefficient, times a constant, taking care of units and stuff, times the net expansion factor, and the square root of the density times the pressure drop. And for incompressible flow, the net expansion factor was equal to 1. If we take a short look at this equation, and imagine, now we want to plot the square root of the pressure drop against the mass flow. Essentially that means we vary this part and see what happens to this part. The rest of the values are more or less constant. So we would expect we get a curve that goes like this and just continues. When you do measurements on a real valve, you actually get a curve like this, but only up to a certain point. What you find is that the mass flow turns off and you will have a maximum value of the mass flow. The value of the pressure drop, where this happens, we call it the choking pressure drop, and the choking mass flow. So what this indicates is that if you have a valve in a real system, and you increase the pressure drop across the valve, then at some point, increasing the pressure drop will not give you extra mass flow. What is the reason for this? Now, let's look at a valve and then let's see how the pressure varies as we move along the valve. We start with a high pressure, some point in the valve the pressure drops and going out of the valve you actually recover some of the pressure. This point here, where the minimum pressure is, that is called the vena contractor. And this is sort of the pressure that creates the choking. You have two different situations. We have incompressible. And compressible flow. So, for incompressible flow, that is liquid flow generally. What happens is that inside the valve, the pressure becomes so low that you actually hit the saturation pressure of that valve. So you start to form gas bubbles inside the valve. Lowering the pressure more will just form more gas bubbles and you cannot actually squeeze more flow through the valve. So that is the reason why the mass flow becomes constant. For compressible flow, then we have a gas coming in, but it's the same phenomena. The gas comes in, or, and the pressure drops. And when the pressure drops enough, you actually reach a point where you reach the speed of sound of the gas. And when you have the speed of sound, you'll have a shock standing inside the valve, and a shock that also means that the mass flow is constant. So choking is a common way of talking about forming of gas bubble inside liquid flow, also known as cavitation, and shocks standing in compressible flow. And again, for the choking calculation, we closely follow the EN standard 6534. Now, when you do these calculations in Cool Selector and you get the choking result, you will get a warning. 
This warning will simply say that the flow is choked, meaning that if you increase the pressure drop in the system across the valve, you will not get more mass flow through the valve. But it's just a warning. It's not saying that there's anything critical going on. You can still continue using the valve. Now, this concludes our valve session. We have talked about incompressible flow, compressible flow, now choking. The final or the next session, we will talk about valve opening degrees. That is, how does the KV value vary according to the opening of the valve? Until then, you can download Cool Selector on the Danfoss homepage. Thank you for watching.